My name is Mike Johnson. I'm a drug counselor. I'm going to give you uh, a presentation that will deal with your relapse dynamic and your setup for relapse. Okay? That's what I'm going to work on today. Here's the thing, though. A lot of us don't understand that when we deal with the lifestyle that we in and the lifestyle that we enjoy, there are some certain options for us. All right? Some of those options are death, jail, addiction, insanity, and broke. All right? The thing is, is that too often we fall into one of those categories or getting close to a few of them. Am I right or wrong? Okay, when you look at your behavior, when you look at your lifestyle, all right, I'm headed for one of these five categories based on the kind of a activities I'm involved in and the appetite that I have. Am I right or wrong? Okay, that's the main thing I need to look at. I also need to know that as it relates to goals, priorities, responsibility, and our being focused and maintaining a certain amount of discipline, that is an area we having problems in. One thing that I find is always relative to the relapse dynamic of individuals involved in the criminal justice system who also use mood altering chemicals, they are not real clear on what their goals or priorities are. Oftentimes when they talk about their goals and priorities, what they're doing is giving the counselor a lot of lip service and trying to tell the tell counselor what the counselor want to hear. We say things like, I'm going to church, I'll get a job, uh, I'm going to spend time with my family, uh, uh, I'm going to go to school, I'm going to use 12-step groups. That's what we tell a counselor. That may also be some of the things that we truly desire to do. Am I right or wrong? But there's another part of us that always has a certain hidden motive. Like, many of you sitting here right now, you may want to give up alcohol and you may want to give up drugs. But there's something else that you don't want to give up. What might that be? That's closely associated to the alcohol and the drugs. Lifestyle. What you mean by lifestyle? Well, I mean, if you're involved in drugs, Okay, okay. Now watch this one. When he talks about lifestyle, here's something else. There's another corner. This corner here, sex, money, material things, family, and loved ones. Those are my three corners. Those are the three corners that we tend to operate out of the most. Keep in mind, this, this bottom box is blurred. It's not really defined like it should be. To whereas the individual is not truly understanding what their purpose or goals are as it relates to their priorities and their needs in life. Okay? When we move, from this box to this upper right-hand corner is when we start making a lot of deals. You can sit here with me all day long, and I'm going to try my best to keep you in this middle box. But many of you will be preoccupied and obsessed with something or somebody in this upper right-hand corner. Okay? And as you nod your head, it makes me understand that you know what I'm talking about. Okay, when I move from this spot right here to this upper right hand corner, I'm now in the process of making a promise and or a deal with somebody to give me these things. That's where family and loved ones come in at. There's somebody I'm working with on this upper right hand corner, family and loved ones, as it relates to sex, Money and material things. Material things also include uh, jewelry, 
as the individual said, cars, also clothes, which are symbolic of status. A funny thing happens when we ask you to give up alcohol and drugs. We are also asking you to give up something that you really don't want to give up. You really don't want to give up your power and or your control. But you need to understand something. If I leave you by yourself with the power, with all the power and all the control that you have, without you being truly focused on what's happening down here in this middle box, you going over there. That's how you got here anyway. You follow? Something that you did going from here to here wound you up over here. And the biggest fight that we have with you right now, we're trying to tell you, look at what's going on over here in this upper right-hand corner. Oftentimes you fight us and say, no, it ain't none of your business. It's part of my lifestyle. You follow? You want to defend that which is designed to kill you. Your real attitude is, why don't all you people leave me alone? Because if y'all leave me alone, I could be busy about the business of killing myself. You understand that? That's your biggest fight. So find respect and dignity from yourself and others. And you don't want it. You don't want it. You're saying, hell no, man. Leave me alone because I've got to find somebody in this world to degrade, to take advantage of, and to play for a fool. Because, see, when I move to this corner, I'm also making a lot of threats. OK, because see what also goes with the promise and the deal, I may say, well, I'm not I'm not going to get high anymore. OK, I'm not going to hang around so and so anymore. That's part of the deal to get the car. That may be part of the deal so that I can find housing so that I can live with a particular person or so that somebody will give me some money. I'm going to see my P.O. or I'm going to therapy or something of that nature. That's the promise and that's the deal. Okay, but in return, I want you to give me housing, money, clothes, jewelry, sex, and things of that nature. But that ain't nothing but a game. What I'm secretly trying to do is regain my power and regain my control. You was abstinent for a while, remember? So I, I stopped getting high in December, but I got high a couple of weeks ago. But what it is, is that since December, he has had no power, he has had no control. He has not truly felt normal yet because part of our lifestyle, people always talk to me about the lifestyle. You know, I need, I, I miss the lifestyle. I want to stay involved in the lifestyle. The only thing that was truly in the lifestyle was chaos, confusion, a bunch of fools, and the police. That's what's in the lifestyle. So when you say, I want to stay in a lifestyle, man, you're telling me that you want to stay right there all your life and try to get right here as fast as you possibly can. Now, the question is, does that make sense? You follow? No, it does not make sense. So if you say it does not make sense, now you are starting to wake up and recognize that one of your goals, one of your goals and one of your priorities is to find, find all those people that you have in your life right now who have no problem with you living here and leaving there. Because, see, the moment that you leave here, you can get a phone call from somebody that will ask you, what you doing? What's happening? What's up? Hitting your pager. You follow? Your pager sometimes is blowing up with phone numbers from people who can't wait to get you back involved in the chaos and the confusion, all right, who'd have no problem with you being involved in the legal system and have no problem with you being a drug addict, have no problem with you being broke, have no problem with you being homeless, and have no problem with you losing your mind. They have no problem with that. But you think they 